So, sometimes they'll throw a problem at you where they try to trick you based on the definitions of distance and displacement. So, let's just say I had an x-axis right here. Or let's just call it the s-axis, just because that's what they're calling in the problem. If my object travels like this and stops right here, the distance is the complete length that I traveled. It's going to be this length plus this length. It's just the total distance you traveled. Displacement is the change in position between my initial and final states. So of course my initial is here, my final is here. So the distance I traveled is the sum of these two numbers, but the displacement is simply going to be my delta s, my delta x, whatever you want to call it, my change in position. And remember, that's what the integral is going to give you. If I'm given a function or velocity as a function of time, and I do the antiderivative, you know, definite integral, indefinite integral, whatever, what that's going to pump out for me is the change in position, the displacement. So the key to these problems is determining the point at which you turn around. So before this point we're traveling to the right, after this turning point we're traveling to the left. So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out when your object turns around, which is basically when your object's velocity is equal to zero. Because when you turn around you have to stop momentarily and we're going to do an integral to calculate your displacement, your first displacement from your initial point to that turning point and then you'll do another integral, you'll do another one of these that is to calculate your second displacement from your turning point to your final. That's basically how you navigate these distance versus displacement problems and we'll do it on this example here. So you have a particle moving along a straight line, so I'll make an s-axis be positive to the right, and here is zero. We have an equation for it actually, we got that. And we want the total distance traveled from time is equal to one to time is equal to 3 here. So, let's figure out if we have any turning points. Because that's really where displacement and distance cease to be the same thing. I'm going to take the derivative of my position equation to get velocity, and that's just simply doing the power rule. That'll be negative 30 times t plus 15 t squared. Now, does v ever equal 0? We can most certainly find out. Factor out one of our t's here. So I know that at time is equal to 0, our velocity is 0, and to make this second binomial 0, our t has to be 2, because 2 times 15 is 30, add it with this minus 30, and we get our 0. So at time is equal to 0, our velocity is 0. That just means at the very beginning this particle starts from rest. doesn't really matter too much for us, but we know at time is equal to 2, our velocity is 0. We have one of those, one of those turning points. And at and that time is equal to 2 takes place during the time interval of interest. So what we really want to do is calculate our change in position from time is equal to 1 to our turning point, which is time is equal to 2, and add to that our second displacement from our turning point to time is equal to 3. And I always like visualizing the problem. You know, at time is equal to 0, v is equal to 0, 
we know that times equal to 2, v is 0. What's going on here? Let's try plugging in 1. What do we get? Negative 15. Maybe a 3. What do we get? We get a 45. So here's my turning point right here. And I know that from the very beginning up until that turning point, I'm having negative velocity, which means I'm traveling in the leftwards direction until I have this turning point. So here's me at s is equal to unknown, but t is equal to 2. And from this turning point to my ending time of 3, I'm having positive velocity, which means I'm traveling to the right. So here is time is equal to 3, and we don't know what s is either. But this one right here is our first displacement. Actually, let me correct myself there. We're going to be somewhere at time is equal to 1. We don't know exactly where, but we're going to be somewhere. This is our first displacement right here, this one. The change in position from time is 1 to time is 2. And we want to add to that our second displacement from time to 2, time of 2 to time of 3. So now it's just a matter of drawing our map. This right here is position at 2 minus position at 1. And we can just plug in our t values to get the positions at those t values. So if I plug in 1 in here, I'll get 2, positive 2. So this picture I drew here was technically a little incorrect. Everything I said was correct, though. We are traveling to the left this whole time from time is equal to 0 to our turning point. It's just we actually started right here at time is equal to 1. So let me just amend my picture here. So here's at time is equal to 1, my location is positive 2. So I start here at time is equal to 1, and I'm traveling left the entire time until I hit that turning point. So this whole purple line in actuality is our first displacement. All right, we're still good though. Okay, well to find s at times equal to 2, I'm just going to plug in 2 in for a time. And we'll get negative 8. So if I subtract these, I'll get negative 10 meters. And same exact process for our second displacement. Position at 3 minus our position at 2. We know the position at 2, that's a negative 8. Position at 3, we just got to plug in 3 into our s equation. And I'll get a positive 12. So again, I'll just make my picture a little more accurate here. Apparently, I'm actually way over here to the right at that time is equal to 3. So I'll just move that over here. But this is just, all of our math is good. This is just me, and I like to make sure our picture is really reflecting the reality of the situation. So here is my second displacement. And we know our s to be 12, positive 12, at time is equal to 3. And if I subtract these, I'll get that our second displacement from our turning point to our final point is a positive 20 meters. So remember, this negative just means I traveled to the left 10 meters from 1 to 2. And from 2 to 3, I just traveled to the right 20 meters. So in all in all, I traveled 30 meters. I kind of want to forget this 
negative here. So that is the total distance I traveled, 30 meters. If you had done just simply position at 3 minus position at 1, if you had, you know, thought that this distance is the same as displacement, well, S at 3 is 12, S at 1 is 2, you would have just gotten 10 rather than 30. And we won't find the average speed just because I really wanted to show you a problem where that difference between distance and displacement really comes up. So hopefully uh, this video helped you guys learn how to navigate through these sorts of problems. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments.